uh, quite dark, and uh, um, onion routing is in a position to, to shine some light on that. And the reason I say that is because, uh, as I indicated, you have this um, uh, multi-hop encrypted path. This is, uh, this is just a screenshot of uh, uh, connected to the DuckDuckGo search engine. And, uh, not a, and, it, and it shows you exactly what the IP addresses were that you routed through. And this isn't just identified, this is authenticated because of the cryptography. These are cryptographically authenticated locations. So this is you know, one of the few places where people actually know where their traffic is going. So that's Tor in general. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Onion sites. Um, people often run uh, Tor and, and, and Onion sites and all this stuff together on, under the rubric of dark web. Uh, but uh, uh, this is uh, the part that they often most specifically mean. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the details about this. The basic idea is so if you have some service, we're going to call him Bob, uh, the way he, uh, that, that this uh, works is he sets up uh, a bunch of connections out to what are called the introduction points. So each one of these red lines is one of those three hot tour circuits that I, I showed you earlier. And these guys just sit there and wait and listen for <coughs> people to connect to them. Then he publishes an address in a, in a, cert, in a directory system. And um, because the address is then published, Alice can go uh, look it up. And uh, then a bunch of other things happen. She connects to the introduction points and stuff. And in the end, you end up with this circuit. Uh, it's like a double onion circuit. There's a circuit that is an onion out from Alice and another one from Bob. And it connects up to this point in the middle that doesn't know anything about either of them. And so you're kind of protecting uh, the, both of them. And uh, because it's from both sides, from like Alice's perspective, she can see the route out to the rendezvous point. And then the other relays are provided by the, the onion <coughs> service, and she doesn't know about that. Now, uh, mostly, and unfortunately, when we first introduced this stuff, we called it location hidden services. And I think that was an unfortunately narrow uh, way to express it, because uh, it doesn't capture some of the very important properties that, uh, that uh, onion services provide. And one of the most important is that uh, onion addresses are uh, self-authenticating. So um, if uh, Bob's address in the lookup system is you know, xyz.onion, um, when Alice looks at the encryption key that she uses to talk to Bob's server, there's a simple function that anybody, well, not you personally, but your, the software on your computer will do that will confirm that, that this function of that public key is the address. So if she's able to speak encrypted and using that key, she is guaranteed to be going to this xyz.onion address. So she just like can't make that mistake. So here's an example, this DuckDuckGo search engine uh, has you know, this as its .onion address. And so because it's self-authenticating, uh, then you're not subject to these uh, DNS hijacks or certificate man in the middle attacks that I talked about earlier because, um, because there is no DNS lookup that happens in this uh, other system which uh, Bob can control himself. And, um, and there, there is no, uh, uh, the, because of the self-authentication, you don't have to worry about the certificates. So um, some of the security properties you get out of this are self-authenticating addresses. You have end-to-end -end encryption, not just for the data passing back and forth, but for the route information itself, which as we identified in the beginning is very important. Uh, and you're generally uh, greatly reducing the attack service, surface. That's because the, the onion services themselves, those aren't run uh, as part of the Tor network. Anybody can go set one of those up. But uh, the connections that go with them are always inside of Tor. They never leave the Tor network, and as such, they have those protections. Now, uh, onion sites are used for a lot of different reasons, and people sometimes overlook this. So there's a band released an album only on, you know, just on Not Onion a, a, a couple years ago. There's now a literary journal that uh, is only available on Not Onion sites. Um, there are a lot of non sort of traditional web applications that you have. Um, uh, Ricochet is an instant messaging uh, type client that uh, there is no central server for this. You know, basically, when you uh, set up Ricochet on your computer, uh, 
there's an onion site on your computer set up and one on the other guy's computer and they speak to each other and, and it's, uh, that's how it's secured. Onion share is a way to do secure uh, distribution of files. Uh, an important one, uh, and this I think harks back to the infrastructure protection stuff that Gordon brought up, is uh, um, a lot of people use Onion services for uh, system administration for services that they uh, need to administer that are, say, behind a firewall. But the address, the location, is not known to anybody except them. They can create an Onion address, which they can then connect to, because Onion sites only connect out. And so they can go and administer these systems. And uh, actually, a fair amount of people do this. Now, how big is Onion space? It's actually pretty small. Uh, it's grown a little bit. This goes only through uh, last January. It's about 40,000 now. There's about 40,000 unique Onion addresses out there. Um, but that's a bit misleading because most of those are not reachable. At any given time, there's maybe, I think it's like six, 8,000 that you can actually even connect to. And of those, a tiny fraction will actually be passing, well, not tiny, but like uh, a couple thousand that, that you can actually connect them to. So this is not a very large space. Nonetheless, it's, you know, it, it, it's these uh, hidden things. How do you find them? Well, there is a search engine, Omnia.5, uh, that, that allows you to you know, go and search for things. But you don't necessarily have to search because it's currently the case that there are a lot of Alexa 500 sites that now deploy an onion site version of uh, their, their uh, um, um, website, uh, notably recently uh, uh, Facebook. Um, in fact, uh, just last month, Facebook surpassed having a million people uh, uh, logging into Facebook uh, over tour. Um, um, now, this kind of underscores a point. I mean, I, I thought this stuff was all supposed to be hidden. Well, uh, a lot of times the onion sites that are out there are just duplicates, duplicates of the registered domain site that, uh, that somebody offers, like, like Facebook or DuckDuckGo. In fact, they're often sitting on the exact same server with running the same web server software and they just have two ways of getting to it. The, uh, the ordinary insecure way that most of us get to websites or the secure way over, over uh, Onion services. Now, um, why would Facebook offer us specifically a .onion address thing? Why don't they just let people come uh, to, to uh, Facebook over tour? And well, they do. But by offering an Onion service, one thing is all those attacks that, uh, that Onion services counter, I, um, they get that benefit. Um, letting people come over tour in general is important to them because they have thousands and thousands of customers all around the world that they would like to uh, make sure that these people have access that's part of the customer base. And uh, um, Facebook is blocked where those people are, and so they can get to Facebook because they're coming over tour. Um, another sort of technical point is that I won't get too much into, but even though Onion uh, protocols are more complex, dot .onion protocols are more complex than ordinary Tor, uh, it actually turns out they can have a performance improvement by offering it as a dot .onion uh, site. And uh, another example, not uh, Facebook, but I, I know somebody runs a small design firm and he discovered that he wanted to let people come to his site over Tor, but his hosting provider didn't allow connections from the Tor uh, system. But no problem, he just set up an Onion site and then he could connect out to the Tor network from that and he could offer that. Um, now, you would still like this all to dovetail with what people understand uh, about security regular folk. And so uh, DigiCert is now offering uh, certificates, in fact, extended validation certificates uh, for, for .onion addresses. So that's why you, know, you get the little lock icon and it's green for, for Facebook. But part of the reason this is enabled is because the Internet Engineering Task Force, um, the guys that write the standards for the um, uh, protocols that run the Internet, uh, officially approved last October uh, the .onion domain as uh, one of the uh, reserved top-level domains. Um, ba basically, it's, it's like officially sanctioned now by the IETF. Now, I, I told you how many uh, Onion sites out there, roughly, there are but uh, how much activity is out on there? I mean, people could just set up all these Onion sites and then not actually um, you know, use them at all. 
So uh, this, this graph is showing uh, the total core traffic, which as I said is about 75 gigabits a second. It's currently, uh, this only went in January, so it's more like 60 gigabits back then. But the, the, the point is that the uh, onion site uh, traffic is in fact a, a, a tiny fraction of what goes over Tor. And in fact, as of last December, we calculated um, through uh, a bunch of research we've been doing lately. And it's very tricky to figure this out because you have to do it in a privacy-preserving way. How do you gather these statistics without identifying people and doing a lot of math to figure out that out? Um, anyway, uh, it's a tiny fraction of the total tour traffic. It's only about 5%. And given the activity that places like Facebook are, uh, are uh, having, you could uh, I would imagine that a good fraction of this is just you know, Facebook. Um, so uh, what sorts of things would people be able to do with this in the future? Well, I know an NGO that's just getting ready to put together uh, a healthcare um, uh, uh, onion site. They uh, haven't announced yet, so I'll just say an NGO. Um, and they're offering, going to be offering essentially anonymous online health services and uh, support for that sort of thing. Uh, this is important. Uh, people I know who research this uh, have been telling me that uh, medical identity theft is kind of poised to completely take over as the dominant form of identity theft and it's going to dwarf financial identity theft in the future, so I'm told. And so having sites like this which can protect your medical information becomes all the more important. And uh, I already mentioned the ways that you might be able to use this to secure infrastructure um, by having points where it's going to be harder for people to find the points of access unless they're uh, you know, authorized in the first place. And of course, uh, government websites, it would be nice to set these up because those should be secure as well. And uh, I've, I've had some queries about this from the folks at APNF. Um, so, uh, uh, summing up, uh, Onion services are about stronger authentication and route security. They're not just about location hiding. In fact, some of the work we're doing right now is for places like DuckDuckGo or Facebook where they're actually not even concerned about hiding. They're not protecting the infrastructure thing. Uh, so they just have a one-sided on Onion service which can allow them to get sort of better performance while still having the stronger authentication. Uh, they're way more varied than you typically see covered in the, in the press. Uh, I mean, I know that uh, you know, it makes a uh, uh, great sexy cover for uh, news stories and CSI cyber and, and whatnot, but uh, it, the reality is exactly quite more uh, broader, uh, and that's going to change even more uh, as we go forward. Uh, another thing is that a lot of people seem to think, you know, run onion sites and tour together, and what we now know is that uh, onion sites, uh, onion services constitute a, a kind of fraction of that. Uh, I, if I had time, I would go through all the things we're doing to, to improve congestion awareness, uh, remove uh, the ability to, to uh, mine the, the distributed hash table where the directory system is. There's people trying to do that now, and that's going to go away very soon. Uh, a lot of things. Uh, and they, they're just becoming an increasingly uh, mainstream. So, a uh, bit of a fire hose. Uh, any questions? Great. A whole bunch of questions. Good time. I have a ton of questions.